Live from Vancouver, Canada, it's theCUBE at OpenStack Summit Vancouver 2015. Brought to you by headline sponsors EMC and jointly by Red Hat and Cisco. With additional sponsorship by Brocade and HP. And now your host, John Furrier. Liftoff. Okay, we're back live here in British Columbia in Vancouver for OpenStack Summit. We're here for three days, our third day of, of CUBE coverage. CUBE is SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. Our next guest is Colin Dixon and Tom Nadu from Brocade, Distinguished Engineer, Engineers. Guys, welcome, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Great to Love see you guys. Cube. Great to see you guys Thanks. again. Obviously, Brocade making a big splash here uh, at the event. A lot of things kind of uh, on the horizon. There was talking about modern, the shift. Kind of open daylight has got a lot of you know, a lot of light on it right now, and the networking stuff is hot. Certainly, everyone's here talking about it. Cisco's even here, uh, pumping up their stuff. What's going on right now with you guys with OpenStack? Because I want to get the story out there because there's some history around NFD super hot. You know, yeah. fiber yeah. channels rocking and rolling. Brocade's in a good position in all this. What's 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 under the hood? What, what's powering you guys right now? Uh, we're we're up to our eyeballs in OpenStack and open daylight. I mean, uh, you know. Part of it is is just getting the two things together, and part of it is, uh, you know, adding adding to the two parts and making it better. And we were just talking about this. Uh, a lot of what's driving that is is NFV these days. Um, yep. NFV um, uh, NFV service function chaining, uh, yep. all of that stuff, and and you know, getting OpenStack and Open Daylight to work uh, together, which which does work. Uh, making that stuff happen is kind of what, what we spend a lot of time doing. All right, so yeah. talk about the integration. Why is it relevant right now? Why is it so hot? I mean, Open Daylight's been around for a while. You guys have been doing a lot of work there. Oh. Open Source is booming. OpenStack is booming. What's the integration points? Why is it important right so, now? So, so there's the classic reason why it's important, which is that, like, you know, frankly speaking, <laughs> the net, getting the network to host virtualized workloads is probably the hardest single piece, right? You know, virtualization of compute and storage, that's been pretty easy. Um, and so there's sort of that story, which is just, hey, we need something something to actually control the infrastructure and get us virtual networks. But I think the really more interesting thing is sort of inverting that, which is everybody thinks about open stack on top and open daylight underneath right? networking services. I think NFV is changing that story and saying actually open daylight or a networking control platform is going to sit on top and you're going to be using open stack actually as a resource provisioning layer for your network, not as a the network servicing open stack. And that's where it is that I think Brocade has a lot more talent, a lot more investment. Um, we have people working on Tacker, which is basically yeah. the, you know, the particular subset of OpenStack that's you know, deploying those service VMs. We have people that are making this work, and we're learning a lot from getting it running in production with major customers. Um, and so well, that's a great point. Let's talk about that inverting concept, because that, that brings up a kind of mindset shift in the, in the mind of the architects out there right now. So one of the things that's come up here at OpenStack is this notion of you know, layers, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, which is a nice light way to framework <laughs> to look at the market, but that's not how people are, or customers are talking. They don't say I need a, a platform as a service. No, no. It's a service architecture, so what's going on is that each customer will have a different view of, the, of how they want to plug into services, whether it's microservices yes. or whatnot. So, that kind of flips things upside down. If you're thinking about that way, then it's a complete broad landscape of services. So explain more about what that means well, from an architect standpoint, because this is where the action is this well, year, well is like architecture. At a, like at a top level, I call it plumbing as a service, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's connecting, you know, like Colin was saying, connecting the compute things, which actually are now containers and, and that whole thing that are running various kinds of work, workloads, but workloads are services, ultimately, that you're stringing together. And the trick is stringing them together in a way that is operationally efficient makes sense and works. And, right? is, and is maintainable. I mean, yeah. uh, the reason we layer things isn't because we like rigidity. It's because we like, it's because it may, it constrains the problem to be able to think about it, maintain it, and service it. But the idea that there is one canonical layering that's going to work for all your customers is just crazy. Um, uh, we're seeing yeah. that, you know, the telcos are going to want to layer networking at the top because that's what they do. And everything is in service of networking. And that's not the way Google's going to do it because Google's not a networking company. They're going to put, you know, virtualization and services at the top that are compute services. And the ability to take these open source solutions, remix them, and move 
move the layers around and sort of make sense of this broad swath of services and to turn them into individual layers for use cases, that's where I think the majority of the value and the money is going to come that's in. That's the services architecture view. You're looking at it, that's how customers are talking. They, don't, they look at their workloads and they'll design it around that, right? That's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah, exactly. All right, so talk about a uh, concept we were talking about earlier in theCUBE around you know, people stringing stuff together, you mentioned <laughs> that, cobbling things together, whatever people want to <laughs> call it. You know, there's been a tinkering model of OpenStack where it's evolving real time, it's hardening a bit, you're seeing all the, 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 the results. And, but people have been cobbling together in open source for a while, mem, where it's memcache yeah. and MySQL, all this <laughs> stuff, <laughs> Lamb stack stuff. Yeah. So what happens from that is brittle, brittle networks. Or, or apps become, or infrastructure becomes brittle. So the, making it more microservices has been a big trend. Can you guys share your vision on that, 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 that notion of, okay, you can cobble stuff together, get things up and running, but to build a hardened, scalable network and app workload environment, yep. you got to make it less brittle, and well, how do you make it more cohesive? Is, uh, well, part of that is, is, is what we spend most of our time doing <laughs> is building a commercial distro of open daylight, right? I mean, that, yeah. that is harder than it looks. Um, that's it, not just a repackaging of some upstream things. I mean, and most of the hard problems aren't in what you, know, what you think of as open daylight. Like, we're not, the hard part is not getting OpenFlow or NetConf to work, right? That's not, that, that pretty much works. The hard part is getting it to deploy consistently in a way that's flexible across the operating system you're deploying it in, whether you're deploying it on bare metal, whether you're deploying it in a VM, whether you're deploying it in order to manage a row of, uh, you know, a single row in a data center, or deploy it to manage five servers, deploy it with OpenStack underneath it, with OpenStack on top of it. Um, and so figuring out how to, what the deployment models are, writing the glue code around it that is actually yep. flexible enough, that's where and the, Stable, and right? stable. It's got to be stable as hell. <laughs> I mean, that's and that's really that's what we spend a lot of our time. And I think all that's right. where Brocade spends all their about, time. Talk about talk about the um, the vision with Open Daylight and the technical direction you guys are seeing in OpenStack. What is your vision for the technical direction within OpenStack, given the work you guys have done to get stuff? Because the demand curve right now is way past POCs. It's on the path to maturity with OpenStack. There's a lot of kind of in the toe, in, in between the the toes details that are really <laughs> unique and small, but big. The big. Yeah. yeah. So I talk mean, that's, about that. That's been cool. I mean, seeing the people People here, you know, was Walmart was was here talking about this. Uh, Comcast, I think, the last one was talking about. I mean, using using OpenStack on a very large scale. I mean, I think we're past the point where people don't believe this thing will work on a big scale. Now it's a matter of refining it and and doing things. So, so the direction I see things going in is um, kind of where where we're focusing a lot of our efforts, which is around um, again. Combining the two, the two together, and you know, making uh, the whole better. You know, making cool things that can come out of those two things. So, for example, um, like Colin was saying earlier, different ways of, of orchestrating different services, microservices, uh, service chaining, and uh, uh, you know, riffing on on yeah. what's there today, and you know, remixing the things a little bit. And you know, um, and, and I mean, even you know. even yesterday when I was on stage with Kyle Mestri, who's the PTL of Neutron, um, Kyle was talking about he wants to, he basically, he would like to kick out the reference implementation from the mainstream thing and turn it into just an API, because frankly speaking, there are enough real implementations of that that take networking more seriously than what's currently there, um, and, and actually deliver the value that people are looking for. Um, and so I think that that's, you know, it's been exciting to see, um, uh, OpenStack realized that like there that there's a huge amount of value here, yeah. but it's not in sort of the deep domain expertise in networking. It's well, the service providers are pushing the hard on this. This is they want product now, so they have, <laughs> they want yeah. they want some delivery. So, what have you guys learned? What's the magnified learnings you guys have taken out of Open Daylight and vis-a-vis uh, -vis where OpenStack is? And talk about what's what you've learned and wh what's the hottest spot right now for the, where the action is. Uh, a stability, so, so we have this, we have this initiative stability in Open like called S3P, <laughs> which is security, stability, scalability, and performance. Um, and we are, s and, and trying to figure out how to drive that agenda in a bottom-up way where the developers rule. And basically, and it's not because, you know, if, if you worked for, you know, <laughs> if it was Brocade doing it internally, we would just yell at people and they would do it. Um, <laughs> and you can, and, and I'm the chair, that I'm that. the chair of the technical steering committee in Open Daylight, which means I'm essentially the CTO of a 100% startup where nobody listens to what I say. All right, they listen, yeah. but they don't have to do it. Yeah. Uh, herding cats so is a term we always say. And, you know, and come I, on. I call them head cat herder. And yeah, so no, so so, right. so a bunch of what we've been doing, and this is but something consensus is important though, because you have a, a lot of money on the table, a lot of consequences that with bad decision making. So you got to be mindful of the of the yeah, exactly. different agendas. And, and so I, and, I, and that's that's actually adds an interesting element of you know like what this guy's job is every day, <laughs> you know, is to deal with those different influences, you know? But the but one of the things we're really doing is try, basically my, my current thesis, and I have no idea if I'm going to be right or wrong, but, but you know, I, I'm 
I'm pretty sure it's going to work out better than we are right now is to basically let's just get visibility. So we're starting to we're starting in the brilliant we're doing brilliant release planning. Lithium's about to come out. We're thinking towards brilliant, which is the next release of Open Daylight, and we're talking about how do you actually try and get this S3P thing to work. And so we're talking about well, you need to have te the, getting the testing framework up, testing things that they're clusterable, that they're going to work with HA, that they're going to you can at least pick a performance target, a scale target, you know, and a, and a longevity target, and just start getting public data out there. And I'm not going to tell you how to fix it, but I'm just going to require that you tell me how bad it is. <laughs> yeah. And it turns out when you require people to tell you how bad it is, you they fix no, the problem. You have no problem getting volunteers to give you data. Yeah, yeah. And so the trick is, the trick is, the trick is, you have to go get the data. But no, the testing is hard. I mean, this is. I mean, we. Well, Stu Miniman is on the all over this stuff. He loves this stuff, and he always says to me, getting the customer inputs key. So in the open source project, you have constituencies in the community, but also you have to in real time get the customer data because now we're seeing production yeah. workloads going out there. So, and well, the service that, provider is banging on NFT's well, really door. Where, where we, we've talked about this a lot this week. I mean, that's really yeah. where the difference between the sort of upstream open source, uh, uh, you know, sort of motivations uh, differ with the production distro kind of motivations, yeah. right? I mean, upstream is more like a developer's kind of environment, developer yeah. friendly environment. And, you know, the, the commercial distro you know, everybody that's building a commercial distro will tell you there's a lot of like maybe not so sexy stuff you have to do around, you know, building uh, building a distro. You know, yeah. installers, testing, yeah. scale, all and that then if stuff. you miss if you overshoot the market, and that distro doesn't develop, we've seen yeah. other markets where yeah. pure play distros is not a viable <laughs> business model. Right, right, you could be you know on, on your butt big time. Yeah, and that's the big question that we always have is you know is there a distro business model? Yeah. I mean, well, well, it, I mean, we have a sort of a hybrid model of, yeah. you know, we have a distro and we fully support all the stuff that you would do with a normal commercial distro, but we build that, you know, we deliver that as a platform that then we build applications on. We have partners that build apps on that. And we're, um, you know, and, and, and other people that are not even associated with us are allowed, you know, can yeah, build yeah. stuff on that platform too. And, and we're and we're focusing. I mean, one of the things that we I've heard a couple of times is education. I mean, right, just say that learning this stuff is really hard. It's something Cisco really nailed, and I think it's a big reason why it is that they stayed so relevant for so long. And so we've been heavily investing in education. And um, the certs aren't there yet, and I'm not convinced the cert model is going to be appropriate. But certainly, education is key. Yeah. And and we do that better than almost anybody else, both in terms of sort of commercial stuff, but also in the open source space, yeah. where who people come to. I can tell you about half of the people that have bought our distro now have 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 listed that as probably one of the top two or three reasons why it's, yeah. it's the stability thing you mentioned the three s's or whatever it was it's pretty solid i mean yes you got to <laughs> fake in a lot of that stuff well there's there's that and then there's training i mean there's it's very hard uh, if you're not a developer you know a hardcore black magic you know <laughs> modern software engineer well, yeah. developer these days to pick up open daylight just like with OpenStack. Bring it, it down, to work. build it, make it to make it work. I well, mean, and then there's the other thing, which you know. is if you want to extend it. I mean, like we do. All, we have a lot of customers. That they're, I mean, they're not buying it because it works out of the box for exactly what they want to do. They're buying it because it's a it's a platform which they can then bake into the rest of what they're going to do. And so, in order to be there, they have to be able to come and ask us questions about. So, I'm thinking about doing this. Am I crazy or is this the right way of doing it? And we can say, Whoa, <laughs> there are dragons in that use case, and you should. And here's what you need to be worried about. Or we can say, Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And and getting figuring out that for yourself. I mean, is literally it's taken us hiring some of the great best talent in the industry and about a year of working on this to yeah. make it work. To make it simplified too, you got to make it deployable. Yes, that's you don't create a longer lag on. Well, that's it. I mean, like one of the first things that our team did when we finally got to the point where we were we were building our distro was we built a what I call the one button installer. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, if you yeah. try to install Open Daylight without our installer have a good time, right? And it's going to take you a while. Yeah, yeah. And, get yeah, yeah. Well, well, and getting everything, like getting HTTPS configured, so that <coughs> way when you're making your REST calls, it's working yeah. correctly, getting the certs working, <laughs> getting to the point at which you have SSL down to OpenFlow that you're using NetConf over SSH, and securing that combined. There's just sort of all of these details. It's like in between the toes, yeah. you're talking your about head like- head blows up, so yeah. and, and complexity. And, and even just, and just, just, just employing enough people to have thought about that for long enough is hard, and customer, I mean, most customers are not going to do that. And, and, yeah. and we have, and, and that's, yeah. the, uh, that's really the value proposition we're well, offering. You've got to give Marantis credit, and their, their business model has been poo-pooed by a lot of people, but they've proven that customers want out-of-the-box <laughs> solution. Stable yes. Out of they box, want, yeah, yeah stable out-of-the-box. So that, that brings up the, you know, the next level of questions, which is, you know, 
as this market, we call it a moving train. There's a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> we just talk about Kubernetes and you know, mm -hmm. containers and all the rage going on. So we still haven't seen those cloud apps fully develop yet to take advantage of containers. So containers are kind of hanging around. Now you got a Kubernetes kind of model. Um, yep. You know, what is, what is that, what, how do you, with the moving train of OpenStack, how does Open Daylight stay up to date and, and can you guys talk about that dynamic and what's changed with Open Daylight over the past just three years since we've been talking to you guys about it? <laughs> well, I mean, it's, hard, it's hard to say what hasn't. It's, I mean, it's easier, been a roller coaster. It's easier to enumerate what hasn't what changed. Hasn't changed. Okay, I okay. mean, I mean, so, 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 so one thing is that we're, I mean, the OpenStack community and the Open Daylight community are really, th th they're the same community, right? I mean, you just yeah. go look at the logos and the people. I mean, it's not, they're yeah. not two different things. Yeah. So, you know, we're following the same trends, we're in the same ways, but I mean, like, I mean, Open Daylight has moved from, hey, is it going to be Big Switch or Cisco, to, hey, is it going to be the MD Sal or the AD Sal, to, okay, this MD Sal thing actually is kind of cool, and you're getting a lot of automated features out of it, let's try and make that work, to, let's simplify things, and, and, and moving to Carafe in order to build sort of yeah. dynamic distributions, you can pick and choose the features you want, to, you know, changing the way the whole web user interface worked. I mean, the thing is moving very, very quickly. And in fact, actually, the, the, the hardest part is trying to carve out enough stability in order to productize it and ship it, yeah. which is, um, uh, but you know, we are not, I mean, yeah. it, we have changed more in the past three years than I would argue almost any other open source project has. Um, it's been it's, it's been crazy. There's always political agendas too, and different approaches. Also, you're you're a vendor in Brocade, but you ton ton of code contributions you guys do <laughs> yep. to OpenStack. So I mean, yeah. people may or may not know that you guys do a great job, and you know we've been following all, all your work. So congratulations on that. But Thank at the you. same time, it's been fun. but at the same time, <laughs> and, but we are in an era where it's you know being in you know software guys since the '80s myself. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, it used to be the best marketing or best competitive strategy could win the day, but now with open source, ultimately software rules, right? The best yes. software actually does actually win out in the end well, if you have a consensus yeah. environment well, like. And well, you can but, see that software. That's also. Well, what's but, yeah, but how do you define your best? Your I mean, this, yeah. this is this is what we're seeing is that best used to be you know that you know you had a vertical that yeah. where you carved everything out. Best these days, as Walmart and people are showing, is really it's about building an agile stack where each component can be understood. Uh, you don't have to understand it, but if you you want to understand it because you think there's value to be derived in understanding it and fixing it or tweaking yeah. it and replacing it, you can. Yeah, and exactly, that's exactly my point. And that's a great thing to highlight. It's not the monolithic software <laughs> that lines of code could be like, you know, we were talking about work days of HR apps, just picking them out as a random example. <laughs> they're not going to solve every, and they're not going to solve every use case in HR, you know, we're seeing companies like ServiceNow developers yep. building out the most kick-ass expense report app <laughs> or the leave of absence app, these little yeah. weird apps that might not make it on the updates. So yep. back to Agile, it comes down to functionality, right? It comes down to, this is software, it's stable, it's scalable, it works for this use case, yeah. and well, it's decoupled, and, and less and brittle. back to Dave's Meyer, it's not what you build, it's how you build it um, that matters. And basically, what, and that's something which we've really taken to heart internally, and, 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 and the way that's manifesting exactly what you're talking about is that broke Cade is a company which now, in the OpenStack space, in the Open Daylight space, we have the expertise to be able to turn around and churn out the next feature quickly. Um, we're yeah. shipping drops of Open Daylight every six weeks, um, yeah. which means releases aren't even a thing. Like, they just sort of happen. Um, well, and, they're and, even and more granular than that now, too. We don't yeah. have a monolithic release. We yeah. release little chunks, yeah. and you know, you and then we the have train up as you go. Well, I think over the past five years, the Brocade has really had been revitalized <laughs> with open source, <laughs> and with OpenStack, it shines the light, if you will, pun yeah. intended, on <laughs> value, right? Yeah. So yeah. Brocade That's might not have the big marketing muscle that the big companies might have, but you've got great talent and technology, but when you bring it out in the open, <laughs> yeah. well, like you shine the light on it, you have an open daylight like situation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, a, and, but it, can, it has legs, so the good e stuff e wins e in that e kind e of even environment. Even in the last year, I mean, I joined Brocade a year and two weeks ago. Um, and when I did that, when I did that, <laughs> when I did that, people thought I was crazy. And and, yeah. I, and I have to say, I've hired a bunch of those people since then. So um, yeah. so they're you know it's <laughs> totally it really put a, a you yeah. know pump of juice into the veins of Brocade as a company, you know, because the market was shifting significantly yeah. and they has made some good bets a decade ago. I, well, I think you know. I'll, I'll tell you. I mean, when when I started building the team, I mean, you know, I took I took. Dave's philosophy to heart, you know, the, you know, worry more about what, how you're building things and what you're building. What that means though, is that you need to spend a lot of time worrying about how you're building things. Yes. And, yeah. and our team process evolves about as much <laughs> as our releases evolve. Every Actually, six weeks more. there's, you know, 
people what? get together, they yeah. say, well, yeah. look, let's adjust like this, let's adjust like that. Well, I mean, and that's totally part okay, of I mean, the plan. I mean, case in point, we started off with one flat structure and that worked really well until we got about 20, 20 or 25 developers. Now we have different teams and we're talking about, okay, well, there's HR report two structures, but there's also a structure of yeah. delivering features. And the thing is, there's nothing is sacred. We're willing to basically, and, and yeah, we, we blow it up at any time, right. move it around, uh, can yeah, we yeah. configure based on what the market's going exactly. on. Exactly. Yeah. And then that's, that's true, that's, that's true down to personnel, not just, not just tech in terms of how we yeah, run yeah, our yeah. development yeah. organization shifts on a six week basis. People move around, work on different stuff. Well, the, st the idea is the stacks yeah. are changing. So what Amazon has proven, in my opinion, is that you can actually do some inter integrated stack work and not get so dogmatic around yes. infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, right. and try to get into a box by some analyst definition, whether it's a Gartner <laughs> or whatnot. But I mean, yeah. the, the bottom line is, is that customers don't talk like that. <laughs> right. Customers talk yeah. about services, right? You well, know, it it's a, you know. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, the other thing I say is it's whatever is a service. You know, it's whatever I need yeah. as a service. Yeah. And it's, it's a, if you can be agile enough and you can have a stable enough platform to build on that, um, then you are free to, to adjust as you need, not just us internally, but you know, yeah. customers, right? Guys, yeah. talk about, let's, let's roll the clock back for the folks out there, a lot of young guns coming in. I want you guys to share your computer science uh, you know, and, and technology <laughs> backgrounds. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, systems programming was all the rage, right? And that was, you know, got to client server drove that. Obviously networking came in, you had network topology distributed, computing kicks yeah. in and the cloud comes in. But now essentially with, essentially people, you know, the younger coders, <laughs> they've never loaded Linux. It actually never actually loaded it. It's always been yeah, loaded. It's always there. Patches <laughs> are always <laughs> auto updating. So this new generation of engineers are coming in. What is the um, the mode of operation right now from uh, from a developer standpoint? Is it more systems? I mean, certainly this show here is very architect uh, driven. This year, hearing a lot of conversations so, so around so what architecture. Skills, what skills? Just skills. skills and stuff. What's the ideal mindset? What's in demand? What's hot? What's needed? Where um, should people try to figure, people are trying to figure out their careers, what, should, who, what teams to join? A oh. Asynchronous, distributed, event-oriented programming. Um, and so Scala, you want, you want it, the reason why it is that we don't write more of our stuff in Scala is because you can't hire them because Twitter and Facebook are paying them astronomical amounts of money. So, and so don't, so, so yeah. Scala is less the technology, that's not the language, but the, the things embedded in Scala. Yeah, which the is skill the, sets. The skill sets embedded, which are understanding that everything is distributed, that you have to be able to pass events around, it's asynchronous, it's, you're not writing a one, two, three, four, five, six steps. And that's a skill set which is just crazily difficult to hire for, really annoying to mm. teach, um, and, and something which I picked up in my education has done me really huge amounts of good. I think that's sort of... It's a craft that's worth having under your belt, basically. If you, yeah, I think that's the biggest shift in the last 10 years has been that, which is, just, it's really distributed computing, distributed systems. Well, we talked well, to the Kubernetes guys about Go, Google, that's a little easy yeah. language to teach, back to the, you yeah. know, getting a computer science grad, teaching them Go is well, pretty easy. Well, the, the key, though, is, is still understanding the fundamentals, yeah. right? Yes. We were talking about this earlier today, right? I mean, I st still think, you know, a, fun und a fundamental understanding of algorithms is important. Yeah. Um, of basic networking principles is important. Right. Basic, you know, distributed systems principles. So, you, is there uh, a certain game they have to play? Is it Call of Duty? Is it, you know, <laughs> no. well, there, well, you know, is there a certain no, no, game no, to have to, You have to understand <laughs> what you're doing. And I, I, it's, you know, no, it, it's generalist. You know. It's being, staying a generalist. I mean, actually, yeah. I, I, if, you, if you ask me right now, the thing, the worst thing you can do is list a bunch of skills on your resume. And, and, and if, because if, if it looks exactly. like you've coasted through the thing, picking up skill after skill after skill after skill, it means that you're, it's, it's a bad sign. What I'm looking for is people that, and what I hire and the people that work out the best are the people that basically are whatever, Java, Scala, PHP, I don't care. It's all basically they the same thing. They can adjust thing. to the tooling, they basically. Can, well, so that's what I'm going to say. So when we hire in our team, and we've been doing this from day one, the number one thing on the board is awesome problem solver. Well, there's the not an right? asshole. Well, there's <laughs> not an <laughs> asshole. Too. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's the zero, that's a baseline. That's zero. No, no, but like, that actually you know, is. That actually is. I mean, there's yeah. really two principles when we hire, but you know, <laughs> keeping, it, keeping <laughs> it on topic, right? <laughs> it, it, but I mean, that is a good point though. I mean, you, you, you know, there are certain sort of company environments. You want some swagger, but you don't want an asshole. There's a difference right. between having well, some no, swagger. Well, well no, the, 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 actually, this stuff matters. The, the what you build, so how you build things is more yeah. important than, than what you build, actually. The, the interpersonal dynamics, no single person, I don't care how badass they are, is going to deliver our product enough in order for them for, for me to ignore their interpersonal dynamics. Yeah. And so the team which we built, the ability to incorporate networking people, software people, test people, <laughs> dev people, C people, Java people, Python people, into one organization that actually interacts, works, and moves, is yeah. to a large extent brocade secret sauce right now. Yeah. 
Um, it's a it's a group of yeah, heavy duty problem team. solvers, heavy heavy. right? And it's well, it's got to be fun too, and because you have a lot of interrelated <laughs> and and working with services and personalities, and now. working yes. with bad personalities does we'll not kill, make we'll it fun, which makes people want to leave. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and so. that's that's really at the heart of what we're doing. All right, so what's the most fun you guys have had programming and developing a brocade? Give us some highlights, <laughs> fun things <laughs> you've done on code, off code. Uh, well, so I mean, so we have an engineer who is Devin Avery, and if you ever get a chance to talk to him, you should pull him out. He's one of the, he's just an all star engineer he's all a around. He's a madman. He's he's just, just <laughs> really, really phenomenally good. And we've gone from basically pushing every single test we run against our product from it from not quite being able to do it in four hours to doing it in about six minutes. Six minutes, yeah. Um, and so and so we basically just getting this whole, you know, Jenkins, um, you know, uh, deploying parallel jobs, testing the whole thing. Testing and integration is really that is where it's about. I mean I, I joke that like the, the tests matter more than the code, but I'm not I'm not screwing around. That is honestly true. Yeah. And getting that working yeah. and watching how somebody takes that and just turns it into the amazing system that it is is, is really stunning. Well, this I is a great example too of what we've been talking about, right? I mean, this is you know writing testing scripts and stuff is not <laughs> not necessarily viewed as the sexiest thing in the world. But it's know? the most important. Thing. But it's the most important thing, <laughs> yeah, and yeah. you know you can you, you know like well, migration is like a big topic here at this show with OpenStack. You've got to you're yeah. moving stuff around. I mean that's all Going about integration. Well, and, and on the level of yeah. skill, the set of number of skills that it requires, you can, no single person can do. So we actually deploy yeah. and we test against about seven different hardware platforms, not just the OS. So we test against um, uh, Ubuntu and RHEL, and we test against our the Viata V router, we test events, our open flow hardware, because it's other people's open flow other hardware. hardware. We test, and so, and yeah. so, and, and the number yeah. of, we test against NetConf, we test open flow, we test, um, uh, what do we test? amazing numbers of stuff. I, don't, I can't even oh, enumerate yes. all of it. But yeah. the result is like that's fundamentally required us getting a dev environment, a QA yeah. environment, and getting those people to come together and talk to each other to build it. And that's where, I mean, if you go look to listen, to listen to Facebook, listen to Google, that's what they're doing. That's what they do. They and build, but, but so that's the analogy, right? The I, When we started off, I kept saying, well, I'm, we're going to build the airplane as we take <laughs> off. And we said, no, no, no. <laughs> You're building the airplane <laughs> and the runway right. and the airport and, and the, the city, city next to and all the other and radar, <laughs> all the comms, everything all at once. And it's a moving <laughs> plane at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but uh, you have to do that to. Yeah, I mean, to well, really if, you, if you're moving at the cutting edge, if you don't, happen. if you don't have, if you can't pull in the right person to answer the question quickly. You're, you're just dead. All right, guys, we're up on time. I'll give you guys a final word. What's next with Open Daylight and Brocade? What's, what's around the corner? Share some, uh, some ahead. insight around what's, uh, show some leg on the, what's coming around the corner. Lithium, beryllium. Lithium, beryllium. I uh, know. I mean, uh, I mean, the big thing that's coming, I think, is that is de is proving this works in production at scale. Um, and so we're deploying in some really, really cool places. And I don't think I can, I can say out loud here. Not but yet. You, but you would be, <laughs> but, like, but, but like, but big. Tier one, big. T tier one, tier one, big, you know, genuine grade A customers. And we're getting it in production. And we're starting to do the hard things, which is not just get the first instance out there, but getting getting it deployed where there are seven different copies of it running. You're dealing with disaster recovery. You're dealing with migrating yeah. from one version to the that's next. That's the ROI on all this testing. And you that's, and that's, yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so a good call. So that's the thing. That or the hurry up, test that other use case. Right. You know? So I think that's the big next thing is proving this thing works and it does all of the things that, you know, you have to make it a real product working in production at scale. Yeah, yeah. I think I, my hope is that next year when I come here at, you know, at this event and you ask me the same question, we can name these guys <laughs> just like, you know, Walmart, Comcast, yeah. everybody is. Yeah. Well, we, 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 we follow you guys pretty closely. That. We'll see you at uh, DockerCon. We're going to see you guys at a bunch of other events. Certainly EMC World's great. Yeah. Guys, thanks for coming on, Colin. Appreciate it. Tom, appreciate it. This is Brocade Inside Thank the you. Cube. Laying it out, going under the hood, talking about skills, open daylight, all the stuff going on in the OpenStack community. We'll be right back with more coverage after this short break. Thank you.